Our next factor is error mass. <coughs> and mass and weight aren't the same thing. If you're doing formulas, you have to keep them separate and be sure to use the right one. But just thinking about it, anytime you hear mass, you can think weight, uh, and it work just fine. Greater error weight does make your bow more efficient. It absorbs more energy from the limbs of the bow. It's going to make your bow quieter, and that's why it is. There's less energy left over for the bow to vibrate. So you should always use the very heaviest error that acceptable trajectory is going to allow. Now, even when you have every other factor in place, greater error weight always means you're going to have more usable force and greater penetration. But from a given bow, increasing the error rate is going to have very, very little effect on the kinetic energy that you get out of the bow, but it's going to have a substantial effect on error momentum. Now, when all else is equal, when all else is equal, tissue penetration is directly proportional to the error's impact momentum. But you can't take that to mean that equal momentum means equal penetration, because the contribution that the error's weight makes to the momentum is more important than the contribution the error's velocity makes to the momentum. And this is a graph that shows just that. Unfortunately, this bottom line doesn't show up on this brick wall. Uh, it goes right along. You can see the numbers for it. It kind of follows the, the numbers. And this top line up here is the error momentum. Across here, we have error weight. So at this end, we have very light errors. These are all shot from one single compound bow. In this area, we have a transition where some of the errors are from the compound and some are from the longbow. From here over, these were all shot with one single longbow. And if you look, this thing keeps beeping at me. If you look at a, a, any given level of momentum up here and look where the penetration is. So we have even momentum, but you have very low penetration with a high velocity light error. And over here, with the heavy air at low velocity, you have very, uh, very high penetration. The other thing you want to look at in this graph is these lines are virtually parallel, where you have just the compound. As the momentum went up, the penetration went up. Same thing over here. The two lines are parallel. As the momentum went up, the <coughs> penetration went up, maintaining that, that same relationship with each other. Now, just because someone always has to ask, here's the graph for kinetic energy, for the same set of errors, along with the penetration. And again, you can't see the blue line, but you can see the numbers. It's the same blue line we had before. You can see we have very high kinetic energy, but we have the lowest penetration over here with these light errors. And we're going all the way up to 86 foot pounds here and having around 11 inches of penetration. And over here, we have our big heady errors, very low kinetic energy with the penetration up here, not quite double, but this is down here at 34 foot pounds, way less than half the kinetic energy. There is no relationship between kinetic energy and penetration. You cannot use kinetic energy to predict penetration in any form or fashion. It, it just, anytime you try to work out a relationship between them, it just doesn't exist. It's not there. And that's because of the factor that Mass's contribution is more important than the contribution that velocity makes. So it's way past time that people start rethinking how they're using this kinetic energy thing. Now there's a really good way, good example to think of them and remember what the relationship is. Now if we have a locomotive that weighs 200,000 pounds, it's going a mile and a half an hour, and it crashes head on into a 40,000 pound truck that's going three and a half miles an hour. Which one gets pushed backwards? The truck gets pushed backwards. The truck has 25% more kinetic energy than the locomotive. But the locomotive has twice the momentum of the truck. So, and that's the big difference between momentum and kinetic energy. Kinetic energy governs how hard something hits, but momentum measures how much forward push it has. And confusing kinetic energy and momentum gives you pretty shocking results. <laughs>